What's up guys, it's Mikey with padbangers.com today with a new app check and today I'm gonna show you an editor that will improve the workflow with your MIDI controller in Ableton Live so much you will definitely love it. Let's go! All right, so the editor I want to talk about today is called Predator and it really is a beast because it lets you create your own custom mappings for your Ableton controller, such like the APC, the launch pad, the native instruments machine, of course, push one and two and many more. And you can create your own custom mappings for every Ableton Live device for each of your uh, third-party VST and AU plugins and even for Max for Live devices. So it's really, really awesome. You can get it on their website isotonicstudios.com. The price is 26 British pounds. So it's not the cheapest tool, but wait until you see what it does and you will definitely agree with me when I say it's worth every cent you spend on it. Now let me show you what it looks like when you have a setting. Uh, I'm gonna fire up Ableton real quick. And then I will show you kind of like a walkthrough how to set it up and what you can do with it. All right, so here's Ableton. Push is loaded now. And now let's load up a plugin I already mapped. For example, uh, Silent One, which is a really big plugin. Here we have it. So normally when you do this and you load up Silent One, you will get just a blank screen that says no parameter mapped. So you can't control it from push to natively. But now with the predator mapping, check this out. When I go here in Silent One and I choose it, boom, I have custom named banks, just like I have my settings for OC1, OCA2, OCB1. I have my mixer settings. I have my filters. I can go even further here and I have my LFO settings. Really, really easy to find exactly the value you want to edit. And um, now for all the guys without an Ableton push with the display, for example, the APC users, you know device mode is a pain in the ass because all the values get spread out over multiple banks. You have no indication um, but these little LED rings that might give you a hint which value you're going to add it. But now with Predator, you will be able to set up your custom banks. And for example, for each synthesizer plugin, you could decide in device mode on my first eight knobs will always control cutoff, resonance, my modulation and the LFOs. And you can map this one time per plugin and your device mode doesn't longer exist. It just uses exactly your mapping. So this is a great addition for every user with a MIDI controller. And of course it needs some time um, to set it up, but you only have to do it one time and it will remember the mappings across all your plugins and multiple instances of it. Guys, it's so good, I can't, I can't say it often enough. I'm gonna walk you through this so you can get a better understanding of what it does. Okay, so let's get started and I choose a plugin here that I don't have mapped before. And yeah, what I have to mention is there are a few limitations with this. Ableton only allows one MIDI channel per plugin instance. That means um, you can't assign more than 127 MIDI CCs. So with really large plugins like Diva, you have to do a workaround where you save multiple presets with different mappings and uh, reach different areas. So that's a lot of work and that's a limitation. And for example, Contact, you can map Contact plugins with Predator, but we all know MIDI implementation and Contact is horrible. Yeah, and it even confuses Predator a little bit by creating a lot of multiple instances of it. So yeah, there are a few plugins where it doesn't work too well, but with most of the stuff I found, especially for audio facts, Max for Life, stuff like that, it works really, really good. So I give you a quick example how to map a plugin. For example, um, let's see, yeah, here, the PG-8X, I did map this before, and it's a great free plugin. Now with threshold enabled, you see 
Ableton has recognized all of the MIDI CCs. But now when you look on the on the display here and I go to PG8X, you see it says bank one, bank two, bank three, and so on. And there's really no logical order how to access this stuff. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna delete all this mapping and configure it myself because I wanna keep it exactly in the order as the sections right here. So we'll have one bank for my DC01, DC02, the mixer, VCF, VCA, and so on and so forth. So first of all, I'm gonna delete all of the auto mappings here and I keep it in configure and I just click every parameter for one time. Great. So that's it. Close configure and now start up the editor. Okay, so here it is. And the first time you open up the editor, what you will have to do is um, you will add your Ableton installations here. I got a stable version and the 9.7 beta installed and you select all these and click on install and, and it will automatically install the um, the remote scripts for the Predator so it can interact with Ableton. And what you will then have to do is you go to your options in Ableton and in your link MIDI tab you replace your standard um, configuration, your standard remote script here from push to and you choose push to XL and use the live mode. So it basically hijacks your original remote script and adds the XL extended version to it. So you won't lose any functionality from your controller. Even if you don't have mapped the plugin, it will just behave like it would before with the normal script. But everything you map in Predator will be override um, the standard settings. So you will really just improve it. There's nothing you could uh, destroy here from your original script and you don't lose any functionality at all. So it's really great. Now let's go back to uh, the Predator and I choose 9.7 beta because that's what I'm in. I choose the push to and then you have this uh, list right here where you can choose live instruments, audio effects and MIDI effects and you can overwrite them. But they are pretty good map for push two already, so I don't won't change anything there. Then you could do this for your VSTs, your Max for Life devices, and your AU plugins. And for example, this is a list I already edited, and now you see we got a new entry, the PG8X. If it's not appearing in that list, it might be because you first have to move one of the MIDI CCs here, and then it will pick up that you have some changes. So, and as you can see, this is just um, what we mapped and it mapped it across multiple banks here. So first of all, I'm going to delete all of these banks and don't worry, the values are not lost. I'm just, I'm just removing the banks. And what I also recommend is to change the, this parameter right here from single to multiple, because what it allows you is, um, to assign one parameter over multiple banks. So what I like a lot is the first bank here is what you see when you are on push and you're not in the details view of the plugin. It's what it's kind of like a main overview over the first parameters. So what I like is I call the first bank here main and I put in kind of like my eight macro knobs, the most often used functions like cutoff, resonance for synthesizers, uh, LFO, output volume, stuff like that. So that's really my quick access when I'm not in detail view for that synthesizer. But what I would do then is, uh, first of all, I click clear. So this is all empty now. And then I would add the banks and name them exactly as the sections here on the plugin. So we have, um, we have DC01, DC02, mixer and so on and so forth. Let's stick with these functions. So now I go back to my DC01 and what I do is I just click here and you see all the parameters that we have mapped. And now this is why we have deleted the auto mapping from Ableton and clicked on each parameter itself because now we can only go from top to bottom and map things really, really quick. 
So we got DC01 range, we got the wave, we got tune, LFO, envelope, and that's it. So now these names might sometimes be a little long for the push to display. So what I do here is I put my own names in here and call this range, waveform, tune, LFO, envelope. So now when I click to live, it automatically updates push to. We go to the PGX8. And as you can see in the main tab, we don't have any parameters left. But when we go here, DC01, boom, here are our settings. On my main page, I definitely want to have the VCF frequency. I want to have the VCF resonance. I want to have the VCA level. Let's check these out. So we call this one cutoff instead of frequency. We call this one resonance and this one is main level. Send it to live. And now on my first page, I got these three settings and these are also the settings we see when we're here in the main instruments view. I go here and I have quick access to these functions. What also really nice is you can add toggle switches. So um, let's go back to the main page and let's say we have the poly mode and you click on this little O and it says on off. Now we have three values here. So for the poly mode, let's check that. And it was poly, unison and mono. So I call this poly, unison and mono. And I send it to life. I can switch between poly, unison and mono. So yeah, guys, that's it. Um, that's Predator. Um, another really great thing is the developers mentioned they want to add functionality in the future so people can share their mappings. Maybe one day we will have a Facebook group or forum where you can share your own mappings and it will save you a lot of work. That's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me some comments. What do you think about custom mappings? Do you even use it or do you stick with the auto population threshold? stuff or even you don't really care and use your mouse if it's not available on the controller let me know what you think about it um, that's it for this time mike peace out